Lucy Short, our producer, producer. Renee Gamori, our producer. Molly Bang, our cinematographer. And Agnes, our editor. <laughs> You're uh, born and raised in Addis Ababa. How familiar are you there in the big city with what is happening in the countryside three hours from the city um, marriage uh, by abduction? Um, born and raised um, in the city. And I think when I was growing up there, um, for a country is the second biggest country in Africa, uh, we had only 4,000 kilom kilometers of paved roads, so we didn't know what was going on outside of the city, except for the news um, reels that we see and whatnot. So the tradition kind of exists everywhere um, uh, within, within the country, but those of us who grew up in the city kind of were shielded from the day-to-day -day life of the village. So I, I had an idea of what, what abduction for marriage is, but It wasn't around me on a daily basis. Uh, I didn't have a, a family member who talked about it or who kind of was abducted into marriage or whatnot, so I didn't know much about it. And the film is based on true events. How did you come across the story of Pivot happening in 1996? <clears throat> I, I left to go to school uh, to the U.S literally about five months after this happened, in 1996. So, while I was in the U.S., I did not know anything about it. So, after graduation, I went back to Ethiopia, and around 2005, I met the brother of the lawyer at a friend's dinner, and he told me about his sister and said, uh, you need to make a film about, about my sister. And I said, sure. <laughs> and, uh, and But he told me her name, and I was on my way back to Los Angeles, and uh, once I got there, I typed in her name, and literally about a thousand pages um, showed up on, on Google. So um, I read up pretty much everything that she's done, um, and this particular case kind of got my, my attention, and uh, four months later, I jumped on the plane and went back and, and asked to meet her, and that's how, that's how it happened. And how did you find Tizita, the wonderful actress, performing the book? How did you discover her for your phone? Um, we were, sort of, Lila was with me in, in, in Addis when we were casting. I think casting took uh, the longest time, uh, apart from trying to raise the money, of course. <laughs> uh, but we were in Ethiopia for eight months, um, trying to find all the actors. I was very adamant in, in finding the, the right people for the project. And, Even though we had a chance to do this film in English, um, would have made it a lot quicker, but uh, it didn't happen. So, uh, Meron is an established actor, um, a university graduate in, from Addis Ababa University School of Arts. Um, and a couple of the guys, the village elder, um, the old man who was in the middle, uh, the guy who plays uh, Herod's father, mother, and, and two other people were established actors in Ethiopia, but Hirut, that was the hardest uh, person to find because um, they didn't have roles for young people in theater or in television, so we literally made 6,000 flyers and went from elementary school to elementary school <laughs> trying to have these kids to come in to the studio and have a reading with us. Uh, nothing happened, and then two weeks before we shot, I went to Uh, my casting director said, well, there's this old man, an actor, who gives uh, after-school theater uh, acting lessons to young kids. And of course, so we drove there, and uh, it happened to be my elementary school. <laughs> so there, in my seventh grade class, uh, was this group of young kids um, learning how to act, and she was in the middle there, um, sort of waiting for her turn uh, to take on Uh, sort of like a vocal lesson, I guess. And I saw her, and right away I knew that was the girl for the part. There are many films being made in Ethiopia. Maybe a question to the producer. Yeah. What is the challenge to film in Ethiopia, to raise money and to yeah, deal with all the techniques? It's hard. <laughs> 
Um, it was really hard. Um, we started financing. I came onto the project in 2009, and um, you know we had offers to sell the script, um, do it in English, um, you know, put Halle Berry as the lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> um, another supermodel was mentioned, and you know we had a very specific vision. We could have taken that money, and we didn't. So. We decided to do very unconventional, um, and we just did it grassroots, approaching like-minded individuals. A lot of Ethiopian people supported this film from all over the world. Amazing artists, uh, amazing painters, um, you know, um, even Coldplay's ba uh, bassist, uh, Guy Berryman, sold his guitar for us at an auction. I mean, so we just really went out there to try and raise this money under, you know, alternative means. And crowdsourcing, we did Kickstarter, so all those names are our Kickstarter campaigns, and that's the way we had to make this film. It took us longer, you know, slower, but we got to make it the way we wanted, so it was really important for us. Um, and just to add, seeing all those names at the end of the Kickstarter was like, I think for all of us, uh, looking at all the people in our lives, for all our lives, because they were friends you knew very well and friends you didn't know, but they all came in. It's really a, a powerful way to put a film up. But just specifically to your question about the challenges, I think we all knew the challenges of, of to shooting on 35 millimeter uh, and processing in India. Um, and I think we went into it incredibly prepared, but you're never prepared enough. And it was, it was you know, walking in a high wire, but, but we had a, a, an amazing team that, that you know, you, you got through the ring of fire. You know, you're always putting out fires. Some days there were rings of fire, but, but, but we somehow put it out and we you know, somehow got it done. Yeah, I would like to ask the cinematographer, how did you experience to shoot and to have your stuff in India and been waiting for, I don't know, a long time? Just great, easy. <laughs> no, it's, it was hard. I, I didn't see dailies for nine days because of the, of the custom. And, uh, and uh, that was stressful, but the other part of it, I, I, I'm so happy to be part of it and join this team of, you know, passionate people and believe in the stories, like real stories. So it's worth it. Questions? Yeah. You can applaud. <laughs> Question from your side. Raise your hands. There's a question. Do we have a microphone? Yeah. Yes. Hello. Thank you for this wonderful film. I really enjoyed it much. Um, as I read, the film was shot on location, and I'm interested in how was the film received, or did you show it in the village, and what were the reactions? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we haven't shown the film in Ethiopia yet, so. Uh, the reason is we finished late um, and then right away we submitted to Berlinale and to Sundance and uh, we were accepted right away so we had to go to Sundance before this um, and so our plan is right after Berlinale we're going to go to Ethiopia and our plan is, is, is actually to go into these villages where there is no theaters and um, we're hoping to, to take a projector and a, a white cloth and, and, and uh, gather everybody like that happened in the under the tree and uh, show it there. So um, in terms of sort of previous um, experience, in terms of while we were shooting the film, this, this story, you know, though it happened in 1996, the, the public was very much aware of it. Um, it was, uh, to Laza's credit, the lawyer, uh, were very tactician in a way to bring the media into sort of the case. And usually court cases uh, were not uh, on your newspapers uh, or radio, so uh, people know about it. So uh, we didn't have any pushback. Uh, uh, we were uploaded, and as you see, a lot of those uh, Kickstarter names, most of them were from Ethiopia. Oh, so I can... Yeah, please, yes, please. Do we have the microphone? Yeah, it's coming. No, no, please. Yeah. No, it's easier because it's really hard to understand you. It's a big cinema. You can ask. I had one question. What happened to Hirut um, from the moment of uh, the film ends on? Um, by the time we got together to make this film, 
Um, it was very difficult for us to find her. I was told in this story that she lived in an orphanage, and uh, not a lot of people had access to her, so the people who represented her um, told us that it was going to be very difficult for us to, to find her, so we didn't get a chance to talk to her. What we know is that she's safe, uh, and she is uh, in Ethiopia, but the people in the village does not know where she is, and we were not allowed uh, to communicate with her for her safety. There's one more question. Okay. Yeah. I've got the mic. And then we um, to you. <laughs> right. You, you say you're going to take it to Ethiopia. I mean, I went, I traveled a bit in Ethiopia six years ago. What a fantastic country. I grew up in East Africa, so I'm an African. <laughs> anyway, so fantastic and wonderful, wonderful movie. When you're going to show it in the village or villages in Ethiopia, how do you think it will come, come across? I mean, sometimes it's difficult, you know, to get rid of deep-seated traditions. And in terms of, you know, female equality and all the rest of it, I mean, how, how do you think it still is in, you know, up, up, you know, up country in Ethiopia? I, I think we've made a great stride in the last couple of years. Uh, in terms of um, gender equality and violence against women. Uh, there are a lot of NGOs that are working on that. Uh, the government is very keen uh, in addressing that issue. Um, to be honest with you, I seriously don't know how that's going to go, but my hope is that it will give us a chance to have an open dialogue. And uh, we were very careful in terms of not pointing fingers at, at men or the lack of, uh, you know, enforcement of the constitutional law. But at the same time, when we were filming, um, we had a lot of support from this village. We actually went to the villages that this happened in. And one of the scenes when she was abducted, they're actually the villagers who were watching us. Actually, every time you saw the camera, there's about a hundred people behind it. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, so the actors performing in that uh, kind of situation was, was amazing. So in one of the scenes where we um, see the abduction, the villagers <laughs> were screaming, no, you're doing it all wrong. <laughs> and a couple of them actually volunteered to show us how to do it. <laughs> so, um, but I know Marek has got uh, what to say about this. Also, you have to understand, Maza is a powerhouse woman who still does so much, and the people love her there. She actually started a, the First Woman's Bank. She's chairperson of the First Woman's Bank. She's a gender advisor to the ECA, which is a special UN commission. She sits on multiple boards all around the world for women's rights, so she's a beloved person, um, and everyone respects and loves her, so I think that will also help the way in which the film is received um, there. Now we have what, you in the, yes. What does the title different mean? Yeah. Um, great question. <laughs> um, it's, it's a powerful word um, that has a double meaning in Amharic. And, in, and on its everyday use, it means courage or to dare. And uh, it also means the act of being raped. Here's a question in the front. I'll just give you that. <laughs> So, the case of Hirot, um, have other cases followed? I mean, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've been confronted with the question after India and, um, and those rape and um, trials that followed. So, do you know anything? How's the situation today in Ethiopia? <clears throat> this was a monumental case in terms of um, having a great effect on the day-to-day -day life of, of young girls in Ethiopia. So, in 2004, the laws were revisioned, and so, um, uh, Marek can explain more on this, but what happened is, since then, uh, there are two types, uh, abduction is one of it, and then there's also another one where, uh, where the father gives up his daughter to another person for lineage or for land or whatnot, and that also became illegal. So, the cases that happened after that were uh, in terms of having resolution. What this case did is empowered women or their mothers or their fathers, even in this case, uh, to actually go to the law uh, and approach the police and um, 
kind of uh, deal with that in that way. So there's a division, as you saw in the film, between customary law and um, cost constitutional courts. So this case really opened the door for constitutional courts. Um, and in, importantly, after the case, though the case happened in 1996, a lot of women's commuti uh, rights community all around the world mobilized to help Maz and her organization. And there were revisions in the penal code in 2004 that defined any gender-based violence as a crime for the first time in Ethiopian history. So gender-based violence, um, abduction became not only, we had the rule actually that abduction was outlawed, but it wasn't enforced. And there was a loophole in the law that if you married her, then there would be no criminal charges. So that went away. Um, so it was, you know, it, it started to be enforced. There were criminal charges regardless. And then um, female genital mutilation, the cutting, actually also got included in that law. So those were huge revisions in the criminal code for the first time. Um, and there's been so, I mean, so much, uh, so many changes. Um, a lot of really great work being done. LFI doesn't happen as much. It still happens, unfortunately. Actually, 30 to 40 percent, depending on what studies you're looking at mostly in the rural areas, not so much in the city. I actually had an aunt who was abducted in the city like 40 years ago. So it doesn't really happen in cities now. Um, and like any change, it takes time, but the codes were revised and, uh, you know, the culture is slowly changing and catching up. Questions? And you have to wait because I don't see you. Yes, there's a question. Any more, any more yeah, we have our next film? one second. It's about your next film? It's about your next film. So you can ask. Hold it here. Any films for your next film? Um, sure. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm interested in, in, in this kind of uh, human stories, uh, things that connect us all. Um, um, Ethiopia is a beautiful place, got great tradition, got great stories, um, and I've been traveling there for the last eight years or nine years, um, and trying to find stories, and I have many, yes, and uh, hopefully we'll do one next year. And uh, okay, there's one more person there. <laughs> Uh, well, first, congratulations. I, I love the really touching. <laughs> um, and also, I wanted to ask you, uh, what was, as a filmmaker, your most challenge when making this film at, as it, like, based on a true story? Um, yeah, it's a great, uh, great question, actually. Well, being a person from the culture, myself, um, the big challenge was to be able to bring this story in a way that not just I saw it, but in a way that the people in Ethiopia have seen it, the villagers, what, what's their point of view, uh, why do they do what they do, and it, it's easy to create a protagonist and an antagonist and rooting for one and, and demonizing the other. Uh, in this case, that wasn't a, uh, that wasn't what happened. Uh, I spent three years going from village to village and and talking to people. Um, I talked to the people who work on this case, uh, the courts, the police, and um, when you talk to them, as far as they're concerned, the perpetrator on this case was healed. They didn't see anything wrong with what the guy did. So it became kind of a, a study of the tradition, a study of the culture. That was what one of the, the biggest um, challenges I had as, as a writer and as a filmmaker to be able to create a cohesive story that's complex enough, uh, that's moving enough uh, with enough drama to capture the audience and be able to also um, put across the point that I, that I wanted to make. In terms of making the film, <laughs> there were many. Um, and from the get-go, um, we had a lot of um, challenges, but one of it is be able to get the right people for the project. So, um, uh, I finished the script in 2008, Mary and Lacey joined in 2009, uh, Lilai came in in 2011, uh, Monica came in in 2013, <laughs> 12, yes, 2012, yes. 
and then Aga came last. And actually, Aga and myself made an Ethiopian with, with Monica too, because I was doing the casting there. Uh, for us, what was more important is in terms of uh, doing this film to protect the artistic integrity of it. And uh, each of us had a, a, a way to do it. Monica and I debated on how we should light the film, or should we light it at all, or how to move the camera. And, and also, um, the editing, should it be stylized or not. And so these are uh, things that happen in, in filmmaking, and doing it in each of that kind of... Um, it was a weird thing to do because it was like, you know, you're making these decisions where you are surrounded by 500 people and they don't know why you're there and why she has a, a camera that, that, that's um, about 85 pounds on her and then and, 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 and why... Yes. Why he wasn't helping her carry it. Why I wasn't helping her carry it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, great challenges, but, you know, it was a, a great chapter for us uh, in Ethiopia as, as, as film industry is concerned, because this was the, the fourth film to ever shoot on, on 35 millimeter film. So, um, we had a great, great um, experience doing it. I think your question is really amazing, and I think in, you know, after D, D, Z would do drafts and say, what do you guys think, we talk about it, the, the finding that balance between knowing this so well, I mean, he's been researching this, and he knows every intimate detail, but also letting it breathe to allow the drama come out, because, you know, he's, he, he's writing it. He wasn't at every moment that you see on film. He, he created it. So I think that... Um, he really worked to find that balance. You know, for example, that scene under the trees is, is, is a fantastic um, moment in the film of, of you of hearing really I think where the balance of, of having this dramatic tension but really being true to the place where it was and really being written by someone who heard those people and just it you know channeled through him. So I just wanted to add that. Great question. Yeah, his question in the front, and you're just giving it. So what was the role of Angelina Jolie in the movie? <laughs> and I thought I wasn't going to be asked that question. Um, great story, actually. Uh, so Angelina um, joined us um, about five months ago when we were doing post-production of this film. And the way it happened is... Uh, one of our executive producers, uh, Julie Moreto, and Angelina have a common friend, and I think different was mentioned at a dinner, and somebody said to somebody, oh, Angelina should see this film. And it happened, and I was asked uh, to send her the film, and it was my first cut, and I was very nervous to send her uh, a not complete film, uh, but um, I did, and uh, she saw it, and she called me. Um, she was in Australia uh, doing a film, and she called me directly, and told me how she loved it and, and she wanted to be part of it and, and, and how uh, she asked me basically like what do you want and how could I help you and, and I said you'll be the great ambassador for this film so that's how, she, that's how it came about okay one last question because you uh, whatever happened to um, her sister the little one um, so um the kind of the heartbreaking story for me was also what happened to the little sister, uh, Aragash. And I did not know about what happened to Aragash until later on when I went to the village multiple times. And often enough, when something happens in one household, the ramifications kind of go with the family. So it affected her as well. So she was pulled out of school and kept at home because her older sister was abducted and then Hero got abducted and then the parents were very afraid of the same fate um, happening to the little ones that they killed her. So as far as I'm, I know that she's at home tending to the cattle and, and helping her mom uh, fetch water and wood. Uh, she's safe as long as she's at home and part of this whole the, the, the retaliation and the vengeance um, culture uh, that we have in Ethiopia is that no one would come to your home to harm you, per se, but if she was caught, uh, per se, if she was uh, carrying water or coming back from school, that would still happen to her.
Great question. We have to go for the next point. It's so great to have you in Berlin. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much.